And boy, what a journey that has been for you, getting to know you. So tell me a couple of things that you learned about you and that you love about you. So the love piece came later. Mm -hmm. Um, What I learned first about me was I was... I was fake. Mm -hmm. Everything that I presented to everyone was this woman who had it all together. And I'm a mother. I am at the time that I had her, I was a single mother. I was on the other side of divorce. Pardon me when she went to college. So I'm in this new space as a single mother. I'm an empty nester. I'm focusing on my career. I'm goal oriented. Everything is great and amazing. And my whole world is Picture perfect, right? That is what everyone around me thought because that is what I knew how to do from past traumas. I knew how to fake it until I make it. I hate that, by the way, when we say that. But I had mastered faking it until I make it to where the outside and shell of who I was was so pristine and polished that you would have thought, oh, there's nothing ever wrong with her. Pull that curtain back. Oh my gosh, I was, I had never started to heal from abandonment issues. The reason why I was living with my father was my parents had a divorce at an early age and my father was the one, you know, who I ended up being with. And I had abandonment issues from that. I had a lot of self-hate because I had never grown comfortable and being who I was physically, being six one, being so tall and standing over most women and a lot of men, I, oh my gosh, I had suicidal tendencies. The thoughts that I would have where I would just lay in the bed and I just don't want to wake up, you know, or, or, oh my gosh, I just wish, wish all of this would end. The fact that my daughter was the only thing where she saved my life. She literally saved my life because I went cold turkey on everything the moment that I found out I was pregnant with her Mm -hmm. up into, okay, she's leaving and, but she's still my lifeline. Mm -hmm. She's still my sense of this is why I have to be here. Mm -hmm. And so I was jacked up like full transparency. I was broken. I had not gone into therapy at that point in my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I was all over the place. I was unhappy Nothing brought me true joy. Nothing really fulfilled me as a woman. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. It was, it was pretty bad. And I had to look at myself and realize that Ebony, the woman, I used everything on the outside to try to create this faux sense of happiness on my inside, mm-hmm. whether it was being a mother, whether it was, you know, trying to dominate in my career, whether it was having relationships with men, uh, whether it was drinking, you know, all of those things were things that I was doing to complete and give me this feeling that I was lacking in a moment or to even experience. Mm -hmm. So post healing and therapy and a whole lot of Jesus moments where I'm laying on the floor, like, Oh, what a ratchet woman I am, you know? Um, I started working on myself. I I started taking time to speak well over myself. I started making sure that my mindset was right before and after and during certain moments. Um, I didn't mention this, but the the gap of time, the 10 years that I had in my 20s, I was married to a narcissist. Mm -hmm. And so throughout that time, that's where a lot of the self-hate came to be where I didn't think I was pretty. And I thought I was, I was ugly and I thought I was fat and clumsy and awkward. And so I had a lot of thoughts and voices of other people in my head. And I had to literally sift through those one by one and, and pull them down and replace those thoughts. And it took a lot of work. It took a lot of work because I could, I could just be walking through the grocery store and it'd be so simple as someone giving me a compliment like, oh, I like your dress. And I couldn't receive it. I didn't believe it. It's like, well, why are you telling me that? What do you want? You know, like I'm looking at you suspicious, you know. Um, so that journey was intense. It was 
very intense. I hope that answers your question, Susie. It, it, it does. It answers it completely. And in many ways, I can relate to that. And I love, I love the secret cocktail, right? Which was, I got to do some mirror work. I got to do some me work. Mm-hmm. It's not a pretty journey. I got to get some other people involved, <laughs> you know, to help me navigate through this. Absolutely. I got to take each one of those phrases one by one and really figure out how to go back to the truth of who God says I am. And I need a whole lot of Jesus in that. And so I can relate to all of it. In fact, I have a different podcast platform called I'm the Good Thing. And the whole context of that in my own discovery is that I learned and believed so many lies that Mm -hmm. the only thing that really was a saving grace to me was going back to who did God say I was, right? And how do I rely on that? And how do I lean into how he sees me? And that is what really made a big shift for me. And so now it's easy to say I'm beautiful, I am fearfully wonderfully made. Like all these different attributes, but I don't say them because they're in me. I say them cuz that's who God says I am, right? And I receive that definition because he's my creator and I believe him and he has been consistent with that message all the way through. And so it's really easy for me to relate to that healing journey because it is a lot to unearth all that when you're going through it. 